Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's enlightening podcast of the Council of Time. Episode number 31, Council of Time. Small recap and more cue and are brought to you by N Generation Project. Listen to Michael, where he recaps into key points from the week in Revelation. Discover the significance of standing firm against propaganda while remaining to view the world through a biblical perspective. Navigate through internal emotions and spiritual influences with expert advice from well-renowned speaker, Mike from COT. We delve into this rebroadcast of the Council of Time, Recap and Q&A, and the significance of our ongoing spiritual growth, especially now more than ever. Don't miss out on this powerful message. For more transformative content, be sure to visit the Council of Time's only official website, linked in the description below. Now let's get into today's Council of Time episode number 31. Council of Time. Recap and cue an Aeon and Generation project. Good evening, everybody out there. Good to see you guys. Very good to see you guys. All right, everybody, it is Saturday. It's going to be here to join you all this Saturday. We're going to have a small recap today. And slash some planning. Actually, I'm sure that you guys have a few questions regarding Revelation. Most people do. I hope that uh, last night, the beginning of some different insights, that carries on at a higher rate as we go forward. Sometimes that can be shocking for people. Sometimes it's very difficult to get in your minds. Right? Sometimes it is. Because let's go ahead and face it. Many have, through entertainment, painted or propagandized the Bible to make it one way. Uh, A lot of people, that's the way they think it is, until they begin to read in a contextual-like manner. Then you begin to see a wholeness with nothing lacking and nothing missing. That truly is a blessing to be able to extract truth that way. It is. Somebody said Chinese balloon again, yes. Yeah. Yeah, actually yesterday uh, morning. Yesterday morning it was spotted and uh, nobody really did anything about it. We know what the deal is, right? We know that countries are a bit emboldened concerning the U.S. We know that. And it's only a matter of time, right, before someone's going to have to show their hand. In other words, a bluff is going to be called. And it will not, the outcome will not be, as people have talked about it. Let's face it, guys. What we know about many things has been based on a narrative, right? A narrative. What we understand of the world has been based on a narrative. And what I mean by that, somebody has taught all of us how to see the world. We don't necessarily see the world through our own eyes, but through the interpretation of those who control uh, the big mouthpiece for the world, right? Television documentaries, things of that nature. Since the advent of the Internet, and more specifically, uh, all these uh, videos, more and more people are publishing their own interpretations of what they see. Raw footage, and believe it or not, a lot of that raw footage is real. It simply is unbelievable. And people are going to have to deal with that uh, raw footage at some point. And I mean, some of that raw footage is excellent. Excellent. There is no government footage that would top some of the raw footage coming out from what people are capturing. Right? It's all explainable, yes. But it's not explainable based on how they have taught people the world is uh, constructed. Right? Even with us. For example, Satan. Satan is... uh, an entity to us, but he's also mythical to us, right? Because if someone were to say, what form is Satan in? 
hardly any of us could give an answer, correct? It'd be very difficult to give an answer. We would simply say he is, you know, in the spiritual realm, right? Truth is, we don't really know what that means. The spiritual realm is not some mythical realm. It's not a made-up realm. It's a governing realm. It's a realm of great and massive forces that will dictate everything that happens in this realm. This is the realm that is more make-believe than anything else. I say that because whatever's declared spiritually must take place in this realm. Right? Things are undone in this realm. Things are done. I don't subscribe to the Matrix concept people are thinking of because of the movie. Right? And it suggests, here's something weird. Take, for example, these ancient uh, alien enthusiasts. They say, well, you know, certain things were not miracles. It was misunderstood technology. You guys ever hear that phrase before? Right? That's what they say. That's one of the top terms they use. It wasn't a miracle. It was misunderstood technology. Here's the issue with that. What is a miracle? It's something that takes place we have no explanation for. Right? They say it's misunderstood technology. Here's the big mistake. I don't say this from a perspective of uh, just observation. Right? I, I, I say it with all conviction. Those in the hierarchy of our faith they don't need technology. They don't. The problem is humanity simply cannot conceive of anything beyond themselves. We are limited by technology. Our father, for example, does not need technology. Angels do not need technology. The fallen angels need technology. Right? The angels that kept their estate, they do not. They don't. God empowers them for everything they're called for. And if he empowered one to split the mountains in half, they don't need technology. They don't need to be strong either. They simply declare what the Father said. Through that declaration, matter will begin to move. Remember something, God commands his creation. Satan and the fallen angels can only manipulate creation. They need technology, not our Father, right? But it's very difficult for mankind to conceive of that because they cannot do it. They can't grasp it. They can't replicate it. And they've taught everybody else that scientific method to believe everything else by. That is the fallacy of pushing science. We have an understanding that her father is of a spiritual nature. And the spiritual realm is that declarative realm that causes this realm to manifest the way it does. There's no matrix. It's simply God's creation. If there are many different levels to his creation we have no idea of. We couldn't conceive of it. We don't have minds to understand it. Right? But technology, no. It's not needed. People dealing with spirits and ghosts and goblins and all that stuff, they consistently say spirits need energy. Right? So when something starts happening, everything gets cold. And they say, well, it's, you know, it's drawing energy. Right? It's drawing energy out of everybody in this, that, and the other. No. There is a physical process, but it has nothing to do with energy. In fact, energy is doubled. Every time they come around, any time a demon comes around, energy is doubled. But let me give you a hint. A demonic entity does not want to come around you. Do you know why? That demonic entity is a spirit, right? So are you. Do you know what happens when one spirit is in close with another? Do you know? It wakes the other spirit up. It does something to you. 
and you can over-exercise any authority that demon has. In other words, whatever it can do, so can you. It never wants you to come to that realization, because it would lose every single time. Right? God works by necessity. Spiritual things work by necessity. They're not there for anybody to observe. They're there when you need them. Things happen when you need them to happen. Things manifest when they need to manifest. That's how that works. And God has already given you authorization. There is a mental, almost a safety mechanism on all of it. So if you're not in faith, if you're not operating out of love, you cannot align yourself with that specific truth. Thus, you cannot use those authorities. And that's something. But when you align yourself with truth, you can utilize those authorities, and you normally do. You may not be aware of it because you're aligned with truth. When you're aligned with truth, right, in the path of God, you're not worried about anybody seeing anything. You're not worried about anybody glorifying anything. You're not worried about anything marvelous. You're somewhat focused on the end result. And you're focused out of love. And many things begin to happen. Right? You begin to exercise authority that way. One day, things like that will take place. And this is why there are appointed times that these other entities use to get even close to human beings. Because everybody out there knows anybody who's ever been tampered with, now it may not be you, but anybody who's ever been tampered with, they always wake up with a few extra gifts. Their eyes are opened a bit more. Possibilities open up a bit more. And they're able to utilize it. For example, discernment goes way off the scales. Your discernment goes off the scales anytime they get close. If they try to attack you spiritually, your discernment goes off the scales. Off the scales. And many things like that happen. So that when they do manifest, you're already armed. You are. That's why it's important to align yourself with the truth of the Father now. Not because of authority issues. No. So that you can mentally choose the Lord. Always. In any condition. You do so freely of the heart, not being moved from that path you select. That you may always be kept. And they will manifest more and more to those who have no idea. I'll give you something else. It is very important spiritually that anybody who has no belief, that they wake up one way or the other. Have you noticed that when you had really no belief in anything, that's when you had your spiritual experience? Anybody ever notice that? It's when you really didn't think about spiritual things or any other thing like that. That's when you had your experience. You were totally caught off guard. Right? And now you do believe. Not in little green men or anything like that, but you have a spiritual knowing. And that happened during a time before you got into the Word. Do you know that's a, that's a, that's a good departure from many? I'll tell you why. Satan will tell you always that you think the way you think, and he works through people, and, and it could be a suggestion. It could be something very innocent, but it will go to work in your mind right away if it's a statement from darkness. It'll always make you think that because of what you saw on television, because of what you've been exposed to, because of all these different things, that's why you believe the way you believe. So the Lord did something else. You experienced things before you believed anything. Nobody can explain that. The Lord did that on purpose so that if Satan were to ever come to you and say, well, the reason why you believe the way you do is because of all this stuff you've been exposed to, you could say no. Because before I was exposed to anything, before I could really get my thoughts together, the Lord showed me just a couple of things. It gave me a knowing of just a few things that did not come by way of influence. That came a different way. And that small bit of confidence, that small 
bit of knowing is enough. It is enough to keep us many times during spiritual opposition. It is. It really is. But woe to the world. They're the ones that have to deal with them. They're being marked even right now. Anyone who believes in this, uh, some of the methods of these spirits, they really do believe in it. And they're not believing in the word of God. They're being marked. Because the day will come when those things will come back and cause humanity to suffer. You will not be among that number of those who suffer. Because you believe in Jesus of Nazareth. Somebody said, Mike, is, is uh, sentient dust real? And can it manifest? Well, where did you hear of sentient dust? Think about it. Where did you get that from? I, I, I'll tell you something. Folks, people are coming up with all sorts of things in these days, and it's it's very important that you keep your life simplified. Very simplified. What will happen is you begin to operate by mysterious things. One mystery leads to another. And before you know it, all you know are mysteries that somebody made up with no origin, right? Keep your life simplified. Work within the bounds of those things you know. And perfect what you know to do. That's being a good steward. When you do that, your father will add to you. But see, people don't know that. What they end up doing is trying to get everything themselves. And they end up forever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. When you're a good steward of what the Lord gives you, he already said he would give to you more and more and more. All right? If you're not a good steward, even that little bit that you have is going to be taken away. So, with those things you know absolutely, not theory, but absolutely, right? Work within that path. Utilize it in everything. Be a good steward over it. Take care of it, right? And the Lord will add to you. As we demonstrate that we are responsible enough to house more and more truth, he will give us more and more truth. We don't have to earn it. He'll give it to us. Because we gain more and more responsibility as we learn to utilize what he's given us already. Our Father is about stewardship, something very simple. But it is incredible that if we become good stewards of what the Lord has already given us, right? if we're walking that out, we actually utilize the word of God in our lives, with what he has given us understanding of. And that will build strength and faith in you beyond what you ever imagined. Right? So when it comes to the esoteric things that people, that may or may not be real, that you really can find no true origin of, and I do not subscribe to pagan religions, pagan societies, for example, the Egyptians, I know a lot of people are fascinated by the Egyptians. I am not. I'm not. I'm not because I know what it is to be deceived. I know what it is to think one thing and that everything looks like that, that what, they, what somebody talked about could be real, for it to be a farce, for it to be a big waste of time. I know what that is. And it happens again and again and again, and again. Now you have a lot of people believing in Egyptian-based rhetoric, Sumerian-based rhetoric, right? I know people have read Zechariah's century. I know about the characters he wrote about, but I do not subscribe to those points of view. If I were back in that society and I saw one fly over my head, I still would not subscribe to their point of view. I would not. Clearly, that is the story of the fallen. And if you've ever read the Book of Enoch, the characters in the Sumerian tales line up with the Book of Enoch beautifully. So here again you have fallen entities, rebellious entities, teaching mankind all of what they can teach them. It's the story of the fallen. It's all around the earth. The Indians... 
I know a lot of people give the Native Americans credence, but let's go ahead and face the facts. They said it themselves, that the snake people, which are the star people, came down and mated with their women. They had children. The children were taken up for so many years, and they would come down and were appointed kings. That's their story. That is their story. The only one exception is a divergent story with the Hopi, a small story with the Hopi. That's it. The rest do not have that story. They don't. In fact, all of the Hopi do not have the same information. They do not. They don't. So that's where you are. But see, we have the word. We have a beautiful gift given to us called the word of God. I have a question for you all. Why is it that God can give us the ultimate truth? And we won't investigate the whole thing. Why is it never enough? Mm -hmm. Why are we so easily drawn away? If you can answer that for your own life, you won't be drawn away anymore. All right, guys, Q&A. Let's go. First question. I have a lot of work to do today, so uh, I've got some typing. Do you guys like things in... Uh, PDF format or just standard web format? Which one? Which one would you prefer? PDF or standard web format? Let me know throughout this talk. I can see both chat rooms and another, and I'll be gauging. So whatever you guys come up with, um, I'll go ahead and do it. I already see a lot of PDF. That's what you guys are familiar with. Okay. All right. All right. We can do that. We can do it in PDF for you guys. Okay. So that means each uh, subject, right, will be on the web. You can read it through your smartphones and everything else, but you'll be able to download that by way of PDF or even view it as a PDF on your uh, devices or print it out, do whatever you have to do. Also, I found I've been tampering, not tampering, but, but playing around with illustrations for certain uh, books of the Bible, and some of them are best described with illustrations. Now, the illustration, what that provides, when you see people doing things, it, it kind of reinforces the story, number one, but it gives you a visual reference you can look back upon and keep things in order, right? Revelation, for example. Yet a lot of people think Revelation is not in order. There is a pattern in Revelation. God tells John, what he's going to do, then he gives him a history of the components that will be involved in what he's doing. Then he goes back to Revelation again. How do we know this? Because we could see that sequential order in Isaiah. We can see the sequential order in Ezekiel. We can see the sequential order in Jeremiah. We can see the sequential order, right, in Joel and Daniel. Sequential means one after the other. So we can see that. It's not random. It's sequential. But Revelation has a history and a backstory of things. And I believe that throws people off. So, through an illustration, which is a good reference, you'll be able to see yourself a lot easier. Or a lot easier. We'll try. We'll see how it works. If it works with you guys, we can do that on a bigger scale. Okay? We can. I ask one thing of any printed things that you guys have. One thing. For, it for at least the first year, right? Because all that stuff is going to be free. So I'm asking of you guys something on an honor system, right? Try to keep the materials original. Can you do that? Keep them original. That's going to become very important. If they are fragmented, if you guys, you know, take out a section and just use one section, it's going to, it's context will be lost. Right? Context will be lost. And believe it or not, just like the KD files, one report is context for other reports. That's got to be very important, too. All the reports together paint a narrative. It's impossible to come out and tell a person that much of what they have learned 
is hogwash. That's very difficult. It's easier that all the proofs are given. Then that be put together in context and in truth. I mean, the highest order of truth. So that that person can see for themselves. KD Files will not convince anybody. It will present to you things that have no placement in the narrative you now live your life by in the world. But we all know from last night, God called us out of the world. And the world is what? Starts with a B. What is the world? What is the world? Babylon. God called us out of the ways of Babylon into his ways. And just in case there's any doubt, go into the book of Daniel, look at Babylon, read that whole story, look at Babylon, and then look at the modern day world. That's all you have to do. We're doing the exact same thing. The exact same thing. And the biggest thing we have is a rule of law. The biggest thing in Babylon was the rule of law. And that's something. It, it's a mirror image of something humanity cannot, they can alter it. It's almost like it's been declared and no one can escape it. Right? The rule of law is alive all by itself. Do you know that? It is life unto itself. People can die. The rule of law stays. And people enforce the rule of law. Now, here's the problem, though. If a person is not divine, and they add amendments to the rule of law, then that rule of law is by no means divine. The trick is when people think the rule of law is divine. That is the trick. Because they give it a very high standing in their lives. Take note, the rule of law was written by men. Some of those men did terrible things. Some of those men made amendments for themselves so they could continue to operate in iniquitous ways. Take note of that. Okay, take note of that, so that you do not deify the works of men, because that would be worshiping the dragon, just so you know that. That's what that would be. You put anything above humanity, you're worshiping something. Remember that. God loves humanity. He sent his son to die for it. But there is a spirit in this earth that would have you put what man has built above humanity. And people, in fact, will kill humanity to keep the things man has made. God calls that an abomination. That's what he calls it. So make sure, make sure that you're thinking about those things. Hmm. Someone said, Michael can talk for being keep and read out with chat rooms. Yes. I was born nosy, and so I've gotten quite good at that. Plus, I'm very interested in what people have to say and their feedback about things. So that interest gives way to enthusiasm, which adds a little more, uh, you know, pep in my step when it comes to what people think. Plus, I see the world in a weird way, right? And you guys are the exact same way. You just may not know it yet. I'm not so sure I can tell you right now, because you may not... Uh, it may shock some of you, right? but it may sing you into deep thought. Anyway, I believe in Christ, and you do too. So let me give you a small hint of something. You have a gift, all of you do, every single last one of you do, no exceptions. You have a gift that if you start using it, well, your life is going to be a bit more refined as to what you say, how you interact, and who you interact with. Because you'll see the outcome to all actions around you. If somebody responds in a certain way, it's almost like you'll see what the outcome is down the road. All of you have that gift. That's how you navigate the world. In fact, you discern more than you know. All of you do. So you can't say, well, I'm not too smart, so I, don't, I can't do things like that wrong. You do things, that's how you live your life. You do that all the time. You guys still talking about that balloon? That balloon has the same, uh, it's got the same machinery, or let's say mechanism below it that mirrors what they shot down before. Same thing. 
Same exact thing. Now, note it. Note it. These uh, weather patterns coming into California naturally are going to carry any type balloon in that direction. But if you notice, the mechanism below it has guidance, these, these uh, uh, thrusters on there, right? Probably some sort of ducted fan motor that moves the balloon in certain directions, right? Expect to see that a lot. In fact, those balloons are in the atmosphere all the time. All the time. All the time. They're just not noticed all the time, right? Some of them don't come solo in altitude all the time. Some of them are pushed away by special observation platforms that belong to the USA all the time, right? So, and don't let them fool you. Uh, we can hack anything that comes into our airspace. We just can't share that. See, what if somebody hacked a Chinese balloon, but the information was so intensive that if they ever shared what was hacked, it would scare the people in the U.S. Because they would then know that the uh, China is operating at a very high level of intellect. Okay, that would just, and technology, that would change everything, right? So if you, if you have an ability to hack something, you let the public know. Naturally, the public is going to say, let us see what you found. That's the problem. They can't show anybody what they found, because if you show people what they found, it will scare people. So how do you get around that? You start denying the whole thing, that's how. That's how you do that. Are you starting to see how, they, how the game is played? There are certain things you can never admit to, because if you do, people are going to find out the heart of the matter, and when they do, that's what's going to scare them. It would scare many people if they found out the level of technology these countries have. It will scare you. It's better that some people believe the narrative that's been taught to them, right? But unfortunately, it is nothing like what you've been reading. And it's nothing like what people have said it is, even under oath. Nothing like that. Somebody says, China has many hobbies. You better believe it. They do. They've been hungry for many years. And America has not. When you're hungry, you develop things out of necessity. In that respect, the saying comes true. Invention is born or is the mother of necessity, right? So China has been in that role for a long time. Been very hungry, very driven. We are the ones who are no longer driven, right? You can always tell when somebody is no longer driven because they turn against themselves inwardly. Happens all the time. Somebody says, Revelation question, are the bowls and trumpets and seals squeezed into three and a half or seven years? No. I, I, listen, guys, okay, this may mess you up, but I'm going to go over why. A lot of people talk about the seven years, and they have said seven years of tribulation, this, that, and the other, you know, because they mashed up the years, right? When I was small, I saw something very different, and I cannot help even right now. The truth of it is, I can't believe it like everybody else has been saying it. I, I, I don't, well, let's say not, not believe it. When it comes to the year factor, it wasn't shown to me that way. It was not. See, for some reason, is there a timetable on the Jerusalem being trampled underfoot? Yes, three and a half years. Three and a half years. But where did the seven years come from? Did that come from somebody's mathematics? Did God explicitly state seven years of anything? Did he? Anybody? Did he? See, because if you, if you extract that from the book of Daniel, you can also extract hundreds of years that work out in the book of Daniel to the time of Daniel's time to the time of Christ worked out exactly to the time of, of the destruction of the temple or, or the trouble in Jerusalem. That works out exactly. But Jesus told us about the time and the timing elements. Daniel was given some very important things. But where does the seven years come from? I've heard people say seven years of tribulation. That's when it begins. Where did that come from? 
Somebody said, Daniel, 70th week. Let me see if I remember by memory. 70 weeks have been decreed upon upon uh, uh, my people, his people, 70 weeks, right? And then it tells you that, but, but listen, 70 weeks, but what if those are sabbatical weeks? Because back in the day, they used to talk about sabbatical weeks, not just weeks like we do, but sabbatical weeks. So what if it's sabbatical weeks? What if it's the week count before Babylon had anything to do with counting period? Well, see, now we run into problems. And by the way, we operate by Gregorian calendar. And believe it or not, when Israel came back from Babylon, they corrupted the holy days. They shifted the calendar. That's why God said, I, I despise your feast days. That was a statement that their feast days were off. Of course, God will correct everything. But God is the one that said it, did he not? He said, I despise your feast days. I despise them. Well, the only way he can despise them is if they are given on the wrong date by influence of something external, what God gave them. That's precisely what happened. God would not despise his own appointed days, but he would despise a date that's been perverted. So when you take that into consideration, then even right now, something is off. Something is way off. Way off. That's why things happen out of season. See, even on God's holy days, you would think by God's calendar, certain specific things would take place almost precisely, right? So why are they off? And if you start looking into this, you're going to notice that things are off a bit, right? Even by declaration of what the Lord said, they're operating a little off. So when it comes to the seven years again, right? When it talks about in the middle of the week, in the middle of the week, right? In the book of Daniel, in the middle of the week, He's going to kind of go against, right, this covenant with many. People read about that covenant with many. I think this is where they're getting the seven years from. And if we go back and look at that, and it is it's common. Is it going to kill anybody if they, if they know it this way? No, it is not. It's not even worth the argument because timing is going to be revealed to us. I can, I, I can tell you guys right here, I'm right here, right now, I'm not here to solve the Bible. That's not what the Lord called me for. I don't spend time solving anything in the Bible. I spend time following what I read in the Bible, walking things out. That is one of my highest desires, right? Not to solve it. Because God said the truth would be revealed in us. And since that is the case, at the appointed times, you're going to know the truth. All we have to do is continue in his word. In fact, Jesus said, if you continue in his words, you are my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And that's what Jesus said. So our continuance in the word, right, is important, not just to read it, but to apply those scriptures to our lives. I told somebody the other day, and that's how I do it. As you read the word of God, apply those scriptures to your life and walk it out. You will gain experience with it. And as you do that, well, then things change, right? So I said, Brother Mike, do you know about the, do you know about those undead emerging right after China and Russian invasion of America? No, I do not. No, I do not. I know people have read about the military's preparedness against the zombie apocalypse, right? Right? Do you know what that stands for? You guys know what that stands for? The term, the, this, this zombie issue period, is a global scenario that they had to have. It deals with disease. If a person is diseased, if they get a specific disease, they'll spread it just like the zombies do on the movies. Right? Even the producers or the writers of some of these movies were, were, were approached by the military to help give the populace a mindset of those zombies in relationship with disease. Because if a disease breaks out and a person gets near you, then you've got that disease. 
and those two people are going to go near other folks and they got the disease. It's about containment. It's about containment. Now, what about real dead people rising, right? That defies the word of God, doesn't it? Can you reanimate somehow the body with the bones and everything else? Demons can. It is highly unnatural, but demons can do that. To a body, so long as it's not decayed and broke down too much. How do I know that? People who work in, in, in hospice, uh, uh, people who have cared for folks who are in hospice programs, they know it too. When a person is close to death, and they've not been covered by the blood of the Lamb, those people exercise many demonic entities in their closing hours or days. They do. They have incredible strength. They do incredible things. They speak incredible insights in ancient languages. Weird things start happening around those folks, and sometimes it is bad. It is very bad. But those who work uh, with the elderly, in some of these homes where they take people who are just, you know, they just make them comfortable, they have lots of experience with lots of people who have not been covered by the blood of the Lamb, who've messed with witchcraft over the course of years, who thought they'd escaped, and demonic entities began to use them at the end, cursing, saying foul things, doing supernatural, physical things that that person couldn't possibly do. For example, a, a 60-pound old feeble woman threw three of the guards, three of the folks who were trying to uh, hold her down, she just threw them against the walls. She broke the, the jacket thing she was in, right? And she swallowed a whole bag of IV fluid and ran down, I think it, they said she ran down the hallways outside the facility, no clothes on, right? knocking people down, doing all sorts of, you know that's demonic, right? When they got the lady in bed, the daughter came in to pray over, and indeed the atmosphere inside that hospital was hostile, and it scared everybody, and everybody saw things. When that lady was finally gone, everybody was relieved and shaken at the same time. This happens far more than you could ever imagine. Do they share these things? Nope. Because that would really scare people. And the people who have been frightened and terrified by these things, they don't desire to talk about it. They're not trying to make money from it. Because when something is real like that, it really shakes someone. They don't want to revisit that over and over again. They don't want to do that. But it happens I'd say every day in America. Somewhere in America, every single day, something like that takes place. But salvation's come from it. A lot of people work in those positions. They become very devout concerning Christ. They don't play with their salvation anymore. They do not. Police officers do the same thing. Certain soldiers who have served in certain areas of the Middle East, they become very devout concerning Christ. They do not play with their uh, um, they don't play with their salvation because of what they saw and what they were exposed to. And believe me, people have gone through things. So at the same time, happening in the world right now, you have a lot of people who you would never think would have a relationship with Christ. They're very devout. And then you have those who appear to have a relationship, who were nice, who did all the right things, and they were mentors in their communities. These people are the ones who betrayed Christ internally all those years holding up the appearance like they were upstanding and what they did was right, right? Because when you see a person like that who's upstanding in the community, all of a sudden you want to be like them. You start emulating what they do. Wrong move, wrong move. This happens over and over again. Those you think are upstanding in society are filthy. And those you would never think of are the most devout. That's what happens. Okay, let's see, somebody else had one too. Revelation question, if the Antichrist is the same person as false prophet, second beast, how do we explain Revelation 19, 20, using the word of both and the beast was taken with him? We already answered this the other day. We answered that same question the other day, so let's clarify this for the individual. I'm going to copy that. 
Right. This comes up a lot, by the way, in this. When you start talking about when you name the elements of the beast according to the book of Revelation, this same conversation comes up over and over and over and over again. It's almost like people are programmed with a mindset they can't get out of. But it's okay. It's okay. Because let me read this so everybody can hear it. If the Antichrist is the same person as the false prophet, the second beast, right? How do we explain Revelation 19.20 using the word both? And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought the miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Right? How, does, how would anybody explain that? Well, let's go to Revelation 20. Revelation 20, you guys ready? Because I'm going to show you something. Revelation 20, where you at? I'm going to show you something. So you got to prepare yourselves. You guys prepared? Revelation 19, 20. You guys ready? We're going there. We're going to do it. This is it. This is the question. A lot of people have this question. Here it is. Revelation 19, 20 says this. Here we go. Well, let's go to 19, 19. And I saw a beast... And the kings of the earth and their name and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken and with the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. Now, let me go back and say this. And the beast was taken and with him, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. One more time. And the beast was taken. And with him, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshiped his image. And these both were cast into the lake of, of fire, burning with brimstone. See, now let's read this with clarity. The question was, if the Antichrist is the same person as the false prophet, how do we explain Revelation 19.20? Here it is. Antichrist was never mentioned in this scripture. Was it? No. It said the beast and the false prophet. And if you listen to me carefully, I always say the Antichrist and the beast that had two horns like a lamb and spake as a dragon, that, that person is the false prophet. That person is the false prophet. Right? That person is the Antichrist. If you take note in here, Antichrist is never mentioned. The Antichrist and the false prophet are one and the same. But there's another beast, the first beast that had seven heads. All those horns and all those crowns, right? So you have the first beast, which is what? Which was described in Revelation 17 as what? A bunch of nations with those kings. Right? A bunch of nations with those kings. And where did this beast come from? The sea. And the sea represents the people, the many tongues, nations, and languages. So the first beast came from people. It is, in fact, a system. The second beast came out from the land. He had two horns like a lamb and spake as a dragon. Right? But he didn't come from the people. He came from the land, from the dirt, from the bottomless pit. That is the false prophet. The false prophet and the second beast are one and the same. They're one and the same. The other beast, the first beast, is the system. Do you see that? Do you see that? The first beast, one of its heads were, as it were, wounded to death. It had a deadly wound but was healed. That's a nation that had a deadly wound but was healed. And the world wondered after the beast because of that head that had the deadly wound that was healed. And it even says it was by a sword or war. A sword is implicitly used for war. So one of its heads were wounded by war. A war caused the wounding of one of the nations. And the world wondered after the beast because of that head, that nation, right, that empire. That was almost destroyed in war, but somehow it was healed. It came back. Right? The first beast 
is a bunch of system errors. The second beast, the second beast that had two horns like a lamb, bah, ah, 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 that type lamb, and spake as a dragon, right, that called fire to come down from heaven in view of all men, who told people to worship the first beast and in fact make an image to the first beast, that is the false prophet. It also happens to be the same one that causes everybody to take the mark. The first beast does not cause anybody to take the mark. The second beast causes everybody to take the mark. The second beast is the one that works miracles in the earth and deceives people by means of those miracles. It is the first beast who told the people of the earth to make an image to the first beast. Or the second beast did that, right? That one with the lamb horns, and that implies some type of religious figure, but he spake as a dragon, a worldly political tongue. See how that works? Very easy. The word antichrist is not mentioned in Revelation 19.20 at all. At all. It says, and the beast was taken, which is the first beast, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. That's already explained in Revelation, did you see that? Did you see it? The first beast was taken. The beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. Well, it just so happens the second beast is the one that wrought miracles before the first beast. See that? The second beast did the miracles, but the second beast also made everybody take the mark of the beast. Do you all see that? Do you see it? The second beast made everybody take the mark. The second beast did all the miracles. The second beast made everybody worship the image of the first beast. Do you see that? The Antichrist and the false prophet are one and the same. The terminology is in the mind. God spoke clearly here. He said that the beast and the false prophet. That's what he said. He's talking about the first beast. How do we know that? Because right here in 1920, it says, the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. Which beast wrought miracles before the other beast? The second beast. Do you see that? In the minds of people, in the minds of people, right? I'm telling you, the movies and the books and all these things, Things pop up and fight the truth that's in the Word of God. That's what's happening. That's all. It's no big deal. It's not to argue over anything else. It's something that takes place. See, when you, as you grow, you have to unlearn what you have learned by the world in order to house the truth. The truth is always going to be fought by what the world has given you. It will pervert the truth if you're not careful. That's how that works. Do you guys see it? Everybody see that? Everybody see that? It's, I mean, it's quite clear. That, but the problem, again, is our trust of media, our trust of, of the grapevine stories, right? <clears throat> Will humanity face myth mythical creatures later on, as in the days of Noah? If so, how do we protect those appointed to, to us best? Beating those things up or... Nope. Those things will not touch anybody who is washed by the blood of the Lamb. They're out there right now. They will not touch anybody washed by the blood of the Lamb. There are people dying by these things every single day. They're not going to report them. And I'm telling you, that's for real. But they will not touch anybody who's washed by the blood of the Lamb. And do you know why? Do you know why? They have a high regard for Christ. And they can never breach the barrier of obedience with Christ. Never. They're not like us. We are the only creature... The only creature that can breach the... Uh, let, let, me, let me share something with you guys. Why would an evil spirit want to possess a human being? Let's go ahead and get this truth out there. Why would an evil spirit want to possess a human being? That seems a bit dumb and redundant, doesn't it? How dumb would that be? Why would a spirit ever want to possess a human being? The secular world says, oh, because they love life and they want to live again wrong. That's dumb. Spiritual entities, which are fallen angels, 
And the children of those fallen angels are clearly described throughout the Bible. They have been doing the same thing since day one. If they possess someone, it is the only way they can get to somebody else. It's the only way. How would anybody get to a saint? Can a spirit touch a saint? No, they cannot. But can another human being touch a saint? Yes, they can. Do you, do you get it? Do you, they're after you. They're after you. They're after you. They're after those who have given their lives to Christ. They cannot do anything to you spiritually. So they have to possess someone in the flesh in hopes to get to you. And here's how they do it. If they can get you to sow any seed of violence, to sow any seed of aggression, to sow any seed of anger, they can act on that. They can harm you. Do you hear me? That's what they're trying to do. They cannot touch you spiritually. They cannot do that. So they seek to possess a human body to cause you to corrupt yourselves so they can get to you. They'll never let you join their ranks. They want to devour you. And the only way they can do that is through another human being. See, the, 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 what people have always told someone is not that a spirit got to them, but that a person got to them. And in that person, their eyes look weird. In that person, something felt weird. A person got to them. Hmm? Let's go ahead and face the truth. That's what we see happening here. See, uh, look, folks, again, when you don't subscribe to what the secular world is teaching everybody about spirits, how would they even know about spirits? The only spirits they can ever know about are dark spirits. They can never know about the truth of our father because they're not they're not they're not in the path nor believing in the truth of our father they're trying to come up with a different narrative can't you see that they're not serving the lord they're serving themselves in darkness do you see that let me ask you this why in the world in revelation would satan Make something in the earth that looks just like he does. Did you read about the dragon? The dragon looks just like the first beast. And then when the first beast was made in the earth, the dragon gave the first beast its power, its seat, its great authority. What is that called? Possession. That's what it's called. Possession. And in this case, dragon is not one entity, but an entire civilization of entities. What does that tell you? If the kingdom of the beast in the earth that looks just like the dragon, first it had to be made, and then the dragon gave it its power seat great authority, so that tells you right now that these kingdoms are working by the power of Beelzebub, of Satan. Now that word dragon is expressly used because it denotes that power center, that entire civilization of things that follow Lucifer. So that power is working physically in the earth against you. It's after you. You don't believe this; these systems in the earth are after you. You don't believe that? That's why things go wrong at the wrong time in your life and everybody else gets off scot-free. You think the beast in the earth is kind to you? Is you're helping you out? Is it a good thing? Folks better wake up and wake up quickly. I found out from the inside of it. It is not what you think. That's something each of you will have to discover. Each of you will have to see that or you will not believe it. There are people in the world right now serving it as though it is good. I'm telling you right now, it is not good. And the end result of it is a rotten, corrupted fruit. And it can never yield good fruit, and it never has yielded good fruit. People have spoken to compensate for every evil thing it has in it. All you have to do is open your ears and listen to the truth of it. Stop buying the stories and the smiles in the rhetoric, and look at the fruit of it. Our Father gave us one of the most powerful principles in the Bible. You'll know a tree by its fruit. 
That means you'll know it no other way but by its fruit. And look at what the fruit has been of all these kingdoms in the earth since day one. It has been destruction upon destruction upon destruction. Even Judas smiled. Even Judas kissed Jesus of Nazareth and befriended him. Then he betrayed him, played the victim and hung himself. The fruit of Judas was the murdering of our Lord. And even though Christ had to go through that, he did not use anything good to do it. You see that? I'll tell you right now, you got people worshiping the system. And that's why all of you who believe in Christ, it doesn't matter who your favorite anybody is. You know that you know something is off when you yield to these systems. You already know it. No one can come out and just say it because they wouldn't talk to anybody anymore. something you have to watch carefully because it's not a joke and people it's been in the earth for years the first beast has been here before you were born it's already been here it's already been at work it's not coming it's already been here you were born into a place under its power 1947. What do you really think that was? I can only see that one way. I can see an entity controlling Israel. You think that was some nice act? Look at the fruit of what came after. How can such unholy murder come from anything that is wholesome and good? It cannot God told us what good fruit was, and he told us what corrupted fruit was. No, that was to put Israel and its people in a vice, and it's going to backfire. That's what that was. Satan will often try to get ahead of the Lord to do something, ahead of the Lord, so that people think what's happening is of the Lord. The Lord already explained that whole story about them being back in their own land. See, when God puts them in their own land, no one will have power to remove them. But he told us something else about them that people do not read. It is the reason they were exiled. It is the reason they were dispersed so many times. It is the reason so many evils came upon them, like no other nation on earth. I'll say it again, when God, it's just like marriage. I hear a lot of people saying, well, God puts together, no man put us under. Here's the problem. God's not putting half these marriages together. Half these marriages are born of lust, L-U-S-T. And we know that. God did not put them together. They lusted after each other. And they sealed the deal. In the foundation of an unholy thing is the blood of innocence. And that blood cries out and it will not stop until the Lord's word is fulfilled upon that place. Any nation whose foundation has found the blood of innocence, the Lord said it must come down, it will fall. Let's not be deceived. God's word is true. But can you see what's happening? A time has come where people are either going to believe what the Lord said, or they're not. For many years, many folks have side-skirted what the Lord has said and tried to mingle it with something else to soften or cushion the blow of the Word of God. It's becoming very black and white now. There's no way to side-skirt it. Soon, it will hit a time. When many people will say, well, I, I just, I don't go with the Bible at all. 
some of you are going to be hurt by the people who say that. Get yourselves prepared for that. Because the ones you think may make it in to the kingdom won't. And many you think that won't make it in will. Get yourselves prepared for that. Get yourselves prepared to see the truth. Not your own personal truth, but the truth. From life's experiences, I can tell you, the truth will not align with your truth. It will not. We have great compassion for people. We have no idea what spirit they're of. If we did have an idea of what spirit they were of, and if it were so obvious, the Lord would not have given us warning so many times about what would take place. The great betrayal that's on its way. And that will take more people down than any event will ever go through. Anyway, that's something each individual will have to come to the knowledge of. I believe in being authentic. I do. For example, I know what these kingdoms are, but I also know what God can do. Say you had a person in the U.S., in, in Congress or the White House or something like that, that has an opportunity for absolute salvation, Right? What would you do if you could see it? Wouldn't you pray for that person and intercede for that person? You'd do that, wouldn't you? Hmm? You'd do that. There are people up there right now in Congress and the White House who have an opportunity for salvation. But people call them evil all the time, not understanding that they're compromised. Just like we were. All of us are sinners saved by grace. We were crooked, thieves, adulterous, murderous people until Christ came into our lives and began to change our direction. Hmm? Because we cried out for the Lord, he came close to us. He is the change in our lives. There are people up there right now. That system is going to devour them if they have no intervention. That's why I said the other day, if you like one of those candidates, then intercede for them. If you feel compassion towards them, let it not be blind compassion. Qualify that compassion with your prayers. Be sober. Sober means not to be intoxicated by the one thing. Sober is to see it all. When you're drunk, you only see it one way. When you're sober, you see it all. Be sober. When you're looking at these people, the world, the Lord told us, the world is drunk. Do not be like the world. Do not emulate the world. Because they'll praise anything they see. Don't, you're not to do that. There's but one thing you can praise and give glory to. That is your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is appointed over all things. When you see these men and women in the White House, you know exactly where they are according to the book of Revelation. Pray for them. If you're led to, pray for them. If you support them, pray for them, intercede for them. Hmm? Folks, you're in something very real. And the casualties are very real. You are here to be a vessel that will destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And he works through you. It is by Christ the Holy Spirit is given in his name. Thus Jesus said, I will pray to the Father and he will send you another comforter. And then Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you. How is he with us? He sits at the right hand of the Father, but how is he with us? He said, if you keep my commandments, I and the Father will make our abode with you and will sup 
with you. By way of the Holy Spirit. Our Lord is one with us. And we are one with him. The Holy Spirit, by the way, is God's spirit poured out on all flesh. It is the spirit of truth. Jesus emphasized the world cannot and does not have the spirit of truth. So if the Lord has put somebody on your heart that's in these kingdoms, you might want to understand what they're actually in. Don't leave them on their own, or they will. Listen, God put them on your heart for a reason. If he puts somebody on your heart, then your prayers are of great necessity. The Lord does not need us, but he already told us he would work through us. Through us, that's why we're here. Hmm? Through us. And we have to be real about our Father's calling and those spiritual things. For many years, people have been tied up with their own individual issues and they've not been able to get beyond themselves. Time to stand up. Look at everything and run from nothing. Go forward with the Lord and hold your head up. Seek to be obedient and make a difference. You'll plow down every piece of darkness. God will appoint you to pave a way for. Be who he called you to be. That glorious church without spot or wrinkle. The ecclesia is the ecclesia. By the works they have done in the earth. You are the body of Christ. In you are the works of Jesus of Nazareth. That means you're authorized. You're authorized. You're the ones that will close the last chapter of this book. That happens by way of Christ Jesus in you. The hope of glory in you. That's his method. That's what he chose. That's why. His power works through you. Don't let Satan convince you to sit on your backside the whole time. Stand up in your condition where you are. And simply say, Lord, here I am. I'll be back in a minute right here. That's UT, everybody. So I'm kind of late on something here, guys. Okay, okay. Would you guys mind if I address something? I want to tell you guys something. I know we have a Q&A. This, uh, this, is, this is breaking. You ready? How many of you feel a bit lifeless? You're in COT, you can tell the truth. There's no judgment in this house. But in all honesty, how many feel lifeless? It's that empty feeling. Hmm? Anybody? It's that, that halted thing. Right? That empty feeling. Directionless, you can almost say. I want to tell you guys something. I was like that once. There was a time when I had everything in my life the way I wanted it. I knew where everything was. I had everything squared away. That was the most lifeless time I ever had. I have to share this with you. Many of you, you've gotten things just like you wanted. And as soon as you do that, you're in control, but you start dying inside. Somebody know what I'm talking about? You got everything just like you want it, 
Sometimes you even have to protect your way to have things like you want it, but you start something dies inside. Something is lost, and you can't identify it. And it turns into almost a deadness. Let me tell you why. You ready? It's because you have everything the way you want it. That's why. See, sometimes you can't recognize when you have a real blessing and when you don't. Well, if you have everything the way you want it, you did so by force. You know that, don't you? You put everything in its place. You forced everything in its place. If all your stuff had a voice to cry out and rebel, you'd have a problem. But you put everything in its place. The way you wanted it, here's the problem. By what mechanism did you do that? See, because in order to enhance spiritual things, right? You have to walk a spiritual way, do things spiritually. When I had my life the way I wanted it, that was not spiritual. That was common. Guess what the result was? Common. And guess what the most lifeless, the most lifeless I could ever be is if things are common. I learned a while ago that I am lifeless when things are normal. And you're no different. If things are normal, you die inside. When it looks like there is no apocalypse on the way, your emptiness is there. Your hope is dashed. Everything is gone. If it looked like the earth was going to fully repair itself and everybody would be happy, you would have no placement. Because you're not born to live in a world that's going to repair itself and everybody have happiness. You're designed and put here by the most high. You're put here for very turbulent times. You're not put here for a peaceful time where everything is hunky-dory. You're put here for things when they go wrong, when all of what people doubt manifests, when direction becomes very hard to come by. It's just like the Word of God. Many of you have tried to be normal just like everybody else, and you felt dead inside. When you tried to be like everybody else, you died inside. As soon as somebody talked about a UFO, a creature, or something else, although it be embarrassing, you came alive. If there's an investigation into the unknown, a mystery, you come alive. Why? Because you're children of revelation. You're children of a very specific generation. You're not here to perpetuate the normalcy. A flesh. That's not what you're here for. You're here for the big shakeup. You're the ones that believe in spiritual things when everybody else said, well, you shouldn't believe that extremely. And you couldn't help it because you did not put that belief in you. You tried to be like everybody else. Didn't work out too well, did it? Hmm? Don't you find that to be funny? So if you're dead inside... It's because you've got everything the way you want it, but the way you put things was just like the other guy, just like the other folks. And it looks good to them, and they approve of it. But it will kill you. You're here to know the scriptures. You're here to operate by greater measure of faith, not the common things everybody else does. That's when you die inside, when you attempt to be like everybody else, when you attempt to believe like everybody else, ignoring what the Lord put in you, because all of us know he put revelation in us. All of us know we're drawn to that book, the same book everybody runs from, we run to. Why? Because you're children of the Sheikah. You're to be in the time when things get very dark. See, that's when you come alive. If that time does not come, you don't come alive because your purpose is in that time. Some of you that are older, 
You've been trying to prepare people for a time they couldn't even. You are witnesses that people have been here on this earth that do not have the mind that can even look into Revelation and see it for what it is. God gave you a mind, right? You were the first ones of a great many that will come after you, those who are here right now. You were here with a mindset of this generation, and you couldn't even talk to anybody. Because what the Lord put in you, he did not put in them. If you attempt to be normal like everybody else, you're messing up. We are to prepare, right? For me and my life, I'm keep this to you. This is, this is me. I will never allow myself to be comfortable like everybody else. I'm not doing that. I get set up every single one. I've done that once. I did that once. I try to be normal like everybody else, and the Lord thrust me into a supernatural nightmare. I was caught off guard. That will never happen again. I will not allow it. I'll be built up in faith and prepared. Doesn't matter to me if somebody says, well, that time is never coming. They're just talking wind. I associate with why the Lord put me here. I'll never let that slip away again. I'll be true to the faith. His scriptures to me are his scriptures. I don't seek to alter them. I accept them the way they are. And when you know it, the Lord has given me insight beyond the mistakes of mankind. I work on my roots to make sure I'm not shaken by the enemy at any level. There's a lot to be done. Because when the time comes, you will not be preparing. No, no. You're the ones who will overcome the beast. Many of you are. Now think about that. You're the ones that will overcome the mark of the beast, get the victory over the mark of the beast. The only way you can do that is to absolutely be within Christ, which means you're meant to overcome things now. Your life has become boring because when you have everything like you want it, you actually tuck yourself away in a safe place. You're not meant for that. Haven't you noticed that when, you're, when you were out there confronted by things, you were alive? You didn't like the situation, but you were alive. As soon as you get things like you want it, and you tuck yourself away in that protected place, and you're not interacting with people anymore, not learning, you know, these things anymore, you're tucked away, you start dying like you're in a coffin. You're meant to go forward, not go run in a hole. You're not meant to go into the hole. That's not who you are. You're meant to observe. You're meant to watch. You're meant to strengthen everything that remains. That's what you're meant for. You're meant to act on Scripture, not just to read it and to know it, but to live by it, to walk by it. When everybody else says, I'm not going to live by that, you're the ones that say, I will. You're meant to walk out on faith, not look for steps of surety, but to say, Lord, you got this. So long as you're my Lord, I don't need to know where I'm going. You're alive when you do that. You're dead if you don't. And many of you know what it's like to be empty inside. To walk those steps that you know very well. To look into those subjects you already know very well. If you already know it, if you already know where the steps are leading, right? You're just following a routine of safety. Somebody told you, you have to stay safe and guard yourself. I'm telling you right now the opposite, that the Messiah is involved in your life. You've had the demonstration of it. You should have been taken out a few times. Why are you still here? You did not save yourselves. You did not come up with the answers that got you out of certain things. You didn't do it. Many of you did it the wrong way, and the Lord turned that around anyway. How in the world did that happen? You tried to get yourselves out of your trials and tribulations the wrong way when nobody was looking, and the Lord even straightened that out. You're going to ask yourself, wait a minute. That means I'm not meant to do it the normal, usual way that everybody else does it. I truly am a person who's meant to step out on faith when nobody else will. 
to stand up when everybody else is laying down, to stay awake when they're sleeping. That's what you're meant for. You're built with one speed, forward. That's it, not reverse. It is people who have taught you, oh, you might want to just save yourself this time, or oh, guard yourself that time, or oh, don't look into that. That is, you know, crazy people believe that and this. The UFO topic. You may not admit it, but every single last one of you have looked into it. Now, how is that possible? You looked into it. You did that. Nobody forced you. You were drawn to it, and you don't know why. Some of you went too far. Yes, let's go ahead and admit it. But you were the ones that looked into it. Why? Because you knew you know something. Something is connected with that subject that you're going to have to face one day. You're trying to arm yourself with something you don't know what it is. That's what's happening. You know what the truth is? They told people the truth about the UFOs. And people can't even hear it. It is the world that tried to guide you in the narrative of what they, what they are. That's where you messed up, right? Don't worry. The Lord had written a lot about those things. And in this place, it will not be a secret. People are not going to like it. I can tell you that now. They're not going to like it. They will not like it. But it is what it is. And you are to be armed against all of what they can do. Because I'll tell you now, if they ever showed up, everybody else would run inside. I know that. I would not. I have a fly swatter just for them. I do. And I've used that before on occasion. Most people don't know about that fly swatter. They don't know about that. Many of you didn't tell anybody, but those very things attempted to seduce you. They tried to make themselves seem like they were benign in your life. They tried to change your entire faith. And they failed. Because you were called right back to the Most High, weren't you? You were. You could have been gone for years, almost on that slippery slope, but the Lord called you back. Those of you that are in it right now, the Lord will call you back. Because you're to have it, those experiences. That's not some accident. No, that's purposed. You've been given an insight into what they will use. You're given a message. And you're not to take them lightly. They are a defeated foe. And you are the children of the warden. And you have a responsibility of faith. Because as you can see, the world is taking a different direction. They have no defense. You are the defense. It is your faith and your belief in Christ. It is that they're afraid of. And I'm talking about what God put in you before you read the Bible. So in this place, it shouldn't be a mystery. All of us are drawn to Revelation. It shouldn't be a mystery. We have weird questions that we have entertained such things. I can tell you right now, I'm, trying not, I'm not trying to be in this place. To be a holy person, walking around with a robe on like I never touched dirt. Nope. No. Because what's about to happen is for real. And people are going to get tired of the acting. All of you that feel somewhat dead inside, now you know what you have to do. Your past is by. This is not your paradise. This is not your paradise. This is not your eternity. You're going to be here and not here. This is not your home. You're here for the purpose of the Most High through Christ. Part of the body of Christ. Rooted in Christ. To affect this world. That's what you're here for. You are not here to pass away the time. 
That's not what you're here for. You know what you have to be careful of. You know how sneaky these systems can become. You know how easy it is to be drawn away. Now it's up to you to contemplate that. It's up to you to listen to your father, to be instructed, to be an example to others. Somehow, they have to escape. Somehow, they're going to have to come through. You are that demonstration of the Bible other people will not read. Don't you know that some, in, in a lot of cases, you're the closest to the Word of God anybody will ever come to. They, they, they'll see your life. They'll see how you react. They'll see how you do things. Do you not know that you're like a book? That what you do can authorize somebody else to do the same thing. That means with your life comes a responsibility. That means you do not have some average life. You have a critical life. Hmm? Somebody says, Brother Mike, if we're losing patience with all the evil, how do we get through that? Well, now, now I'm, I say this with love. When you lose patience with all the evil, it's because that's our failure. We did that. We did not read the word of God all the way. Because if we read the word of God all the way, we would know that evil would build up at the end, that evil would have kingdoms at the end, that evil would wear out the saints of the Most High at the end. We're the ones that messed up on that. Jesus warned us. He said, don't cry for me. Cry for yourselves, Jerusalem. Right? We messed up because we listened to the narrative of those who said, oh, everything's going to be fine and nothing's going to get worse. We believed those who convinced us when we should have read it for ourselves. We did that. We messed up. Let's go ahead and face it. We messed up on that. But when you know you messed up on that, that's when you go back to the word and you say, nope, not, not anymore. See, when you're prepared for darkness, you know what happens? You become a help to somebody else. You truly do. Because you're not moved by those things anymore. You're not. You're moved by the truth of the word and the results of truth. That's what you're moved by. That's what you start to live for. You live that somebody else can be free. Because the first thing you notice is all the bondage that takes place. How do you know that? Because you know that bondage very well. All of us, we know what that bondage is. In fact, all of us know many different types of bondage. And all you, if, if you do not deny your own process, you will see it everywhere out there in the world. There are people out there right now crying for someone to show them something, to speak to them. If your light goes out, they could be done for, because here's something you may not know. Somebody's looking for a light that only comes from you. It does not come from me. It does not come from anybody else. They can only see your light. If your light goes out, if you go into a hole and hide that light, they'll never get it. That light is their hope. Have you ever heard somebody talking, right? And you say, I've got to find out who this, who that person is, you know, because I can relate to that. You, because it gives you hope when you hear people say certain things, right? They connect with you. It doesn't happen often, but it happens sometimes, right? And if you can find that person, and indeed, it is what you thought it was. It is a, it is a gift from the Most High, isn't it? But imagine if nobody inspired you. Imagine if nobody aligned with you at all. Imagine that. How empty of a place this would be. Right? If your light goes out and you're the one that somebody else has put here to hear, they're going to be in trouble. So what I'm telling you is this. You're not just here to go through your process. You're not just here for that process of salvation for your own personal lives. Somebody else is connected to your life. Somebody's connected to you. Somebody needs you. Somebody needs to see you operate in faith and in truth with the word of God. And it takes a lot of refinement to get a person there, doesn't it? 
Hmm? I never want my refinement from the Most High to ever end. I never want that to end. I love the Lord's refinement. I cannot stand the flesh because I can see the results of the flesh every day in my life. I know what it can make a person do. I know how it can hurt people. But see, I also know how Jesus can save. How he can truly raise the dead. How he can give sight to the blind. How he can make the lame walk. The deaf hear. I've seen that. And I want to see more of it because I know he can do it. So I just tend to agree to drive the ambulance straight to the great physician. I don't care what the weather is, what the conditions are, who agrees or disagrees. I do it for the Lord, not for popularity, but for the Lord. And I know those ways were in you so much more than in me. You know, the, the first one is not the strongest one. You guys do know how it works. Well, let me tell you how it works. If, if you were the richest person on earth and you had children and you wanted your children to get the best education, how would you pick the school? Hmm? Wouldn't you pick the school with the best teachers? You would, wouldn't you? You want your kids to get the best education, wouldn't you pick the school with the best teachers? I know I would. If you want your kids to have the best education in the world, you pick the best schools based on the best teachers. Correct? So let me show you how it works. What the Lord will do is call unique people to teach specific things to you in your life. Pastors, teachers, all sorts of people. Why? Because you're his children. And so he will send people very specific and unique to teach you certain things because you're the ones that mean the most to him. You see that? Hmm? Have you had kids you love and you want them to be educated by the best because you want them to survive, you want them to finish their task? You send them to the school with the best teachers. The best is often picked for the ones who are loved the most. A lot of people have that backward in the world. Oh, the teacher is great. No. No. No, you're the great ones. The recipients of what God sends. Do you see that? You're the ones. You're the beloved. Can you see that? Moses. Moses, who betrayed his own brother. Moses. Moses, who was an irritant to the Most High more than once. Yes, I said it. Moses, the one who disobeyed God and almost lost his life in the wilderness. And his wife had to remind him to circumcise. She had to rush to him to circumcise his son before God was going to take his son's life. That Moses. Moses was unmovable when he received from the word of God, but he stammered in his speech. He had problems in his past. He was problematic at best. But the one thing, the one thing he would do was he would go forward with the instructions from the Lord. He would, when nobody else would. He was one of a kind, but he was sent to those God loved the most. Do you know that? And then he died and they went on. He didn't enter into the promised land. They did. God sent his best to get us this word in the King James Version of the Bible. So what if somebody had a grammatical error? God did not hinge your salvation to man's mistakes. He called strong, sturdy people to get us that word. 
He put a word in you to give to somebody else. And while you're going through that process before you give that to somebody else, he's sending many teachers to you. I'm just a guy in the bushes. We God to sent you guys some gems. And in turn, one day you'll be a gem to somebody else. The first to be last and the last to be first. The greatest is the least and the least is the greatest. He's good that way. And he's very real. So again, listen. See how those of you who felt a little lifeless, that, that lifeless, being lifeless can kind of lift. When you put your mind, your heart back into the word of the Lord, not into the world. If I could tell you anything, it is this. If I were to put my heart back into the world, my mind back into the world, and everything back into the world, I would surely die. I'll never put my heart, mind, and soul back into the world again. I'm sold out to the most high. And I always pray to him that he keep my mind set upon him. I do. I don't want things the way I want them. I want to be pleasing unto him. So I'm quirky like that. Hmm? Quirky. The Lord will do it. My goodness, he'll do it. He sent me some, some awesome folks he really has. I can see it no other way. See, what most people have a problem with, I do not. I know. Like that dream the Lord showed me about Pastor Paul. So before I even met Pastor Paul, see, nobody can tell me. No, Nobody. Not, not one soul can tell me, well, you know, you probably shouldn't. No, don't tell me that. Don't do it. Don't you do it. Don't do it. The Lord knows what he's doing. And he also, he shows you people. Right? He does. And I do walk around with dilemmas. I do. See, people are attracted to the weirdest things. People are attracted to the standard the world set. They are. A well-spoken person is what the world produces. They can pronounce everything right. Right? You'd be shocked who in the Bible could not pronounce hardly anything right. Moses couldn't. He could not. Moses couldn't. I like authentic people. I do. I love those who operate by the Spirit. I've noticed something, too. Sometimes you have a balanced person who's, they're just very balanced. But sometimes you get true gems. You do. Those who truly have an assignment, they walk around with dilemmas all the time. They do. You can tell it, too. With everything they say, everything they do, it's a dilemma. It is. A big dilemma. But it's also a beautiful thing. Because it shows their authenticity. You guys walk around with dilemmas. You wonder, should you say this, should you not? Should you hold this, should you do this, should you not? Lord, how's the Lord seeing this? And how's he looking at this? Did I say the right thing? Did I lose control? Did I say too much? Did I say too little? All these different dilemmas you walk around with but it truly shows the heart of the person and above all things Jesus gave us something that you can know all his disciples by you guys know what that is by how they love one another never forget that you can meet passionate people in your life but the Lord has shown me some extraordinary individuals he has especially those right, who can record me and then be bold enough to play it to somebody else. Are you? Have you lost it? That takes. That takes a lot. You guys know. I am purposely problematic. So you have to be pretty bold to do that. That takes that excellence on a different level. He really does. He really does. But when you hear people talking about the Lord, right? You can also discern the spirit. And if the Lord allows you to see the growth in people, it's a beautiful thing. It is. 
But I'll tell you guys something. When the Lord gives you a dream about someone, never forget it. Do you know, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to share something with you guys. When I first started talking to Pastor Paul, do you know that's when things started to get very dark? Do you guys know that? And things are very dark right now, aren't they? Don't you find that funny? Don't you guys find that funny? Hmm? You guys remember the dream. I told you about the dream. But don't you find that funny? The things are very dark right now. And they're getting darker. When I told that dream, Pastor Paul was on a boat coming on the water, right? Do you find it funny that after I met Pastor Paul, a few years after that, he was on satellite with a company called La Sea. Think about that. He's on the boat on this water talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ saying, what, are you serious? And then later on, he gets a contract with a satellite company called La Sea. La Sea of all things. To do what? For the gospel of Jesus Christ. You don't see any overlap. You can't make that up. You, there's, there's no way you can make that up. There's no way you can make that up. It's almost like you can see the purpose in that ministry. That's why it hadn't gone anywhere, and it's not going anywhere. Because he's reserved for something very, very difficult to do. Right before the darkest hour, he'll finish what he has to do. In that dream the Lord showed me, not one piece of it has fallen apart or failed. Not one piece. Not one piece. It's a timing thing. And that's just with that dream. But that's why, right? That ministry in particular is an appointed ministry. An appointed one. And you guys, the ministries you're appointed to, it's up to you to take care of them. It is. You are the defense of the ministry you're appointed to. Do you know that? You know why they couldn't kill? You know why they, certain Jews couldn't kill the apostles? Because of the people. They tried to get to Christ. You know why they couldn't? Because of the people. Because of you. That means you're more than what you think you are. You're not just, you know, occupying time here. No, no, no. No, you're a multi-rolled individual, right? You are. And all of you at some point will have to carry on. There are people out there who need you. They are. So it's my last thing. You know how sometimes you can't muster up the strength to get through something? You guys know what I'm talking about? There's something in your life that's a big deal. And it seems like you fail at overcoming it all the time. Anybody ever have that? Anybody have that? Anybody? It's that one little thing. It's a nuisance, right? You, and it's almost like you fail at it. And it's like, okay, Lord, I got to overcome. I know I got to overcome this. But you cannot for the life of you. It's almost like you don't have that extra push it takes to, to get you over the hump. Let me share this with you guys. I don't know of any Christian who can muster the strength to do the ultimate thing for themselves. I know. See, if, you, if you're a believer in Christ, right? Really a believer, then you have repented. And if you have repented, you know you messed up. And if you know you messed up, you know you fell out of favor with the Most High. So you know who you really used to be. So you really can't brag on yourself in truth. Which means if you're trying to do something for yourself, you're always going to hit that moment where you say, well, I probably deserve this. Somebody's got to know what I'm talking about, right? So then your strength is zapped. You have no more strength to do it. You just can't find it. Normally, you end up leaving that area alone, and it festers. The Lord has given you guys something. Something aligned with his principles that is more powerful than you can imagine. So hear me on this. You can't find that internal strength yourself to do specific things, right? It's just not there. Each of you has been given someone, someone in your life, 
someone is in your life that has pulled at your heartstrings. Someone, it could be a child, it could be an adult, someone is in your life has pulled at your heartstrings. And that someone has been responsible for those times when you felt dead inside. They came around. They needed something. They, in fact, these are the very ones that need something at the wrong time, it seems. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? The, the, the ones that seem so needy at the wrong time. How many people have somebody like that in their lives? You can't run them off, but, they, they, but sometimes, right, they just show up at the wrong time. But you love them, so you won't, you know, you end up giving into it a bit. So somebody knows what I'm talking about. Well, that's the one. That's the miracle in your life. And let me explain this. See, because when you start thinking about scriptures and the Bible, you think about the world and people in your family not making it, but you haven't thought about that one because you protect that one. Do you know that? It is for the one you protect, it's hard to think of that person not entering into the kingdom of God. So you don't even think about it. Do you know that? You give them an instant pass. Do you know that? You don't want to think about that with them. Not with them. With everybody else, yes. But not with them. Not with them. Because it would break your heart in multiple pieces. If of all people, that one did not make it in. That would destroy you. Wouldn't it? Even the thought of that would destroy you. Because for some reason you can't help it, you defend them now. When you find yourself in a very weak moment and you don't have strength to overcome certain things, God has put something in your life, a gift. But here's how it's a gift. You cannot fight for yourself, so I propose something. That person needs you. It does. Are they enough to get you? Right? Would you overcome anything for their sakes? That's something only you can answer. Because if you would, that's who you look at when you're overcoming things you have no strength to overcome. Them. You don't do it for you. Look at them. And out of love for them, become strong for them. So that you don't give up on them. Because all too often, there's another thing we don't think about. We don't know if we're going to be here tomorrow or not. We don't. If the Lord were to take any of us, we will leave people behind. And it always seems like it's out of timing. In fact, you'll leave everything behind, and you will not be able to come back to give any guidance, to cushion any falls. You won't be able to do any of that. And that person at that moment is going to have to make it on their own without you. You don't know when that moment is. If you love that person, you keep that in mind every day of your life. Take no shortcuts. But do everything necessary in that day to help prepare that person to make it, to be rooted in faith. It didn't matter. See, when you love someone, it doesn't matter what they believe, don't believe, and all this kind of stuff, you will fight for them. Do you hear me? That means for that person, if you love them by love, overcome all things for their sakes, just like Jesus did for our sakes. Jesus did not go to the cross for himself. He went to the cross for us. It was his love for us that fueled him. Why do I say that? Because he is the word of God made flesh and dwelt among men. It is the heart of the Father. He loved us so much he sent his only begotten son. So you better believe that mindset was in Jesus. His love for us wants us fuel. So let your love for others be your fuel. Do you understand that? Let your love for others be your fuel. You will never run out of people like that. That means you will always be fueled. For the right reasons. Matters of strength. Beyond strength. I know that one inside and out. Because I too can't do anything for me. But I can do everything for somebody else. And I don't care what the cost is. Because when you do something. By way of love. It is a sure and complete work.
when you set your heart on that path, get ready. Get ready. And that is a, that's the last thing I want to give you. Because that's your authenticity coming out for somebody else. And you know what happens when we're authentic in what we do like that, right? Now we're exercising righteousness. And your Lord and Savior is always going to be involved. Jesus is not our crutch. Do not use him as such. Jesus is involved in true works, not false ones. Right? Never use him as a crutch. You know what I mean by that? Never say, well, Jesus is going to handle this anyway, so it's no big deal. Don't do that. Don't do that. Be authentic and thorough. And do what you do as you would do unto the Lord. But never use him as a crutch. I say that because being born in this world, that's something we're taught to do. To utilize the strength of another for ourselves. I heard a person say once, they said, well, you know, I don't want that person living with me because they can't do anything for me. And that made me sick to my stomach. That's what the world teaches that you embrace those who can give something to you. I say dare to be different. Embrace those who couldn't possibly do anything for you. Love those who will not love you back. Give to those who cannot give anything back to you. Because above all things, we do desire to be pleasing unto the Lord, don't we? And by the way, that's the scripture I just gave you. Hmm. Somebody says, Mike, the temple is our body. How can we understand this under that context? The seven angels came out of the temple having seven plagues. Now, it named where that temple was, not our bodies. It named exactly where the temple was. Once you read that whole thing, you'll find out it was talking about the temple in heaven. No temples on earth. So it was not us. It was the temple in heaven. It specifically talked about that temple being in heaven, right? The one that nobody could enter. No human being could enter into that temple. So it wasn't talking about the human body. Here on this earth, our bodies are temples, because of the Spirit of the Lord. Right? Okay. That's how that works. A temple made without hands is what that is. In Revelation, when it's talking about the temple that the angels went into, that they were, you know, doing their dealings with, it also said that nobody could enter into that temple until the seven, those, those seven plagues were poured out, those seven vials were poured out, until those angels completed what they were to do. So we know that was uninhabited by people. That is a reserved place. Nobody's entered into that place. That was in the heavens also. It specifically said they were in the heavens. So in Revelation, it denotes, it really details where these things are, right? What they are, but it really details that. That's all. That's all. Somebody said, what does put on the whole armor of God look like exactly? How does one do it? First of all, it's not our armor. It's God's armor. That's the first thing. All right? The second thing is, these are those properties of a child of God, of being authentic. In fact, in fact, if you had all the armor but the helmet, you're not authentic. If you have all the armor but not the shield, you're not authentic, right? If you have all the armor but not the shoes, you're not authentic. And so what that is, that's authenticity. Because when you have faith, what do you have faith in? What do you have faith in? The gospel of Jesus Christ, our Father, what he's doing and everything else. That's the helmet of salvation. You have all those components of the armor. Are you being authentic with the Most High? To put on the whole armor is to be obedient. No one who is disobedient has that armor on. 
If you're disobedient, you do not have that armor on. You don't. You don't. It is something you have to choose to put on. Do you hear me? You have to choose to operate by faith. Nobody can force you to operate by faith. You have to choose to have that helmet of salvation on, right? Nobody can force you to put that on. You have to choose to have those shoes that are swift to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Nobody's going to force that stuff on you. You have to choose to have these things on. And when you choose them, you can't choose one without the other. See how that works? Can't do that. So, that's how that works. Somebody says, can you talk about those having issues in getting in shit? Dusting is having difficulty. Well, listen, listen, guys. A lot of people, you guys have to remember your passwords. There, every time somebody forgets their password or they get, they, they, for example, somebody put in five requests to get a new password, right? The system processed the password, gave it back to them, and they selected the wrong password. They gave in five requests. They had a receipt, I believe it was a receipt of three, so on the third one, they entered that one in. Well, they had already requested a new one after that, so they got ahead of themselves. That's what's happening to a lot of people. They can't keep track of their password. I suggest that when you reset your password, don't do it five or six times. Click one time. Wait just for a little bit, and then go in there. Now, some people have requested access into the chat room. They've not been processed yet. Because we're loading up a bunch of other stuff in the system, and we have to really watch. Um, th there are certain times we get close to bandwidth issues, and we don't want things to go kapoof on us, right? We don't want that. And so as we, as we get things, you know, things expand, and things change, of course, that'll, all that will change. But uh, guys, keep in mind, we have 400-some chat rooms running. That's our number one product. We keep people in. We, the, we have churches using our chat rooms for their congregations, okay? So the same chat room that's in COT, there's a similar chat room other people use. They put their logo and everything up there. They're utilizing our services straight from COT. They're not going through third parties or anything else. That's coming straight to COT, and we have to keep them operational. I believe the last count, I haven't counted them uh, in, a, in about two or three weeks, but there was, there was a count of 425, 423, something like that. So can you imagine the traffic, 423 chat rooms? Nobody pays for a chat room. Nobody's going to do that, right? We're trying to do that so that we can do a true work for the kingdom of God. We all of us know what's coming. All of us know that when people chat in these other forums, their text is recorded. It's kept, it's parsed, it is, you know, put in these relational data sets and deep analytical data is pulled out by AI, this, that, and the other. We don't want any part of all that. We want that for the kingdom. There are specific tools in these chat rooms just for Christians. If I were to turn one of our things on in, in our chat room, right, uh, you guys don't want that on there yet. I have to tell you about some things before we put that on there. But let's put it this way. It makes it safe for everybody. <clears throat> and but some people, um, well, well, it's just something you have to see to experience anyway. So that's what we're doing. Now, COT is going to be using one of the most advanced chat rooms that we can come up with. In fact, a company saw one of the betas of the chat room that's going to be used in COT. They tried to buy it. Right? So you could think of it as a new concept in communication, right? And it does require compression. So there you go. In fact, we have an approved, we have an approved component with .NET. We have an approved component with, with the IPv series. We have an approved component that will be used Internet-wide so that anybody using that specific compression is going to be identified. It's been filed. It's been approved. It's being spread. And so that has a, that, that's a tool that is in-house made here. We're doing things like that. Okay, that's what we're doing. Also, our chat rooms have a redundancy of radio. Radio, you know what radio means? If the Internet goes down, we stay operational. Um, I'm not supposed to say this. I was told not to say it. But we have beta devices of that air device that have been in operation for the last eight years. And when AT&T went down because the radio chip wasn't enabled, it automatically went to the radio. 
Anyway, I can't say anything about that anymore. Any, no, no more of that. Right? Here's why. You speak too much about that, it will be blocked. We don't want that blocked. We want that released at the very last minute. And I have a neat way of doing it. So if a person has a cell phone connected to COT at the time of down communication, right, at a specific time, you'll have an option in your cell phone you never saw before with COT that will enable the radio chip in your phone. How cool is that? Now we have to figure out something with the new uh, protocols that uh, iPhone is using. Yeah. So anyway. All that stuff takes a lot of research. It does because you have to know the architecture of the phone and get to the right place. All of them have radio chips in there. All of them do. And what that will allow you to do is communicate to people who have been on COT also. We're going to be working on uh, a very special map for you guys, for your families. And with that map is something that nobody thinks about. Is if, uh, we, know what's hap- we know what's going to happen this summer. right? This summer is going to be worse than last summer. This spring is going to be worse than last spring. People will be displaced from time to time. Wouldn't it be awesome if everybody had one place to meet up in? A known place to meet up in, right? Wouldn't it also be often if that, awesome if that place were tracked so that if it were moved, then it would reflect in your device that that location was moved so you can always meet up with your family. So you're not hunting and searching around for family members. Wouldn't it be awesome? So we're going to coordinate something like that for everybody. That's a tool of automation, lots of testing and everything else. The things like that is, is we're developing things like that so that everybody can have a, a little bit of peace of mind and a plan in place when things take place, right? Same thing goes with the window window units. We had, we had what? Oh, my goodness. I, I bet we went over at least 90 designs of the window unit dealing with ash to see what's effective, how to control the, the, the um how to create positive pressure in a house is what we've been working on, right? And so that takes a very special window device that is both solar with a lithium battery that can actually cause a little bit of positive pressure to your house. And what positive pressure, that means nothing will come in your house. That's what it means. No ash, no anything is going to come into your house. And so we needed to overwhelm. We needed a system that would overwhelm certain natural you know, natural gaps in your house, like floorboards and your doors and all this stuff. So it would overwhelm that kind of equal out. And so that's been a project close to me because I know what's coming. I know we're going to have to deal with an ash environment, right? I know we are. Somebody says, what? Somebody said, what was that? Somebody said, uh, Mike, how do you know many will go to the COT building? Because that will be publicized, actually. Now, listen, with the building, guys, is it is... A lot of time is involved, a lot of inspections, uh, a lot of headache, okay, lots of headache. And so, but things are oh, things are okay, right? I'm not rich. This is not, not a project that's going to be done overnight. That's not going to happen. You're talking about a multi-floored uh, structure there, right, that has to be, uh, certain accommodations have to be in there. Things have to be up to code, up to standard. Uh, double check, recheck, and everything else. Security plans have to be in there. Uh, contingencies for insurance has to have insurance. Um, all different types of things had to take place, and so all that takes time. All that takes time. It must be safe. It has to be safe, right? It has to be safe. Now that building was given a COT, but of course, even though it's given a COT, you wouldn't have to pay for the building. I can assure you that every year and monthly. Uh, it's something, which is why I'm in a rush to develop a few products, right? So it can uh, pay for all the future things that we are going to develop. And they're still holding up a patent, two of them, two of them. They're still holding them up. Um, that probably is my mistake. It is. Probably is my mistake because of my, my past affiliations. Probably why. Right? You get into the intellectual property thing there. So it's a lot they can just they can just really cancel if they want to. Right? So anyway. Anyway. That's where we are with that. So I do not estimate 
a while for that. Uh, I, that building is going to do what it needs to at the right time. I had a dream about that building before it was given to us, that all of us were in there trying to stay away from the rain. Something was wrong with the rain. And on the skyline, it had a walk where you could walk through it from one side of the building to the other, but it was a, it had a dome over it. The hallway had a dome. So it was like you're not walking outside. It has a dome over it, right? But you can walk from one side to the other. And something was wrong with the rain. Something was wrong with the rain. Nobody could go in the rain. And this guy was looking for cigarette butts all over the place. And somehow he got in the building. He started looking through all the trash cans and everything else. And I was upstairs with a couple other guys. And we were, we were coordinating a way to, to do two things. To get this guy a bunch of towels on him because he had rain. He was contaminated. And to got to get him into a room where he couldn't do anything else. I remember that. So anyway. That was one of those things, right? We do have medical personnel on board, too. Uh, there are people with practices that already know about that building because they know that um, we're putting some things in place because, listen, I operate by convictions. I know certain things are coming. It's not important that everybody know those things that are coming. It is important that people know the word. So those things I talk about, I actually prepare for. I just don't talk about them. I prepare for them on multiple levels. My whole life is devoted towards those things, period, for real. So that's where we are with that. That's where we are with that. Two of the personnel in COT will be the first to introduce everybody else to that place. No, three of the personnel in COT, right? Because... Two of them will probably have they, they, they have the they'll have the keys, so they will do what they need to do with everybody else based on the procedures, and we're going to have to work all that out for security. Okay, so to be a small group first, we're going to have to work out some security things, and then the bigger groups will come in. No big groups are coming into that place until security is worked out. People are crazy in this world. Right. So what do you think would happen if people found out Mike from around the world was indeed at a specific building out of curiosity? Right. People who probably like that character and hate that character would show up. Correct. And we have to be ready for that. And be ready for that. So that's why it, it just wouldn't be all nice. I can tell you that. There would be some problematic things. And there are a lot of there are a lot of nut jobs out there. A lot of people who are not so nice. Right? So you have to be prepared for that. Anyway, that's where we are with that. With the website, well, we have a lot to unlock and unleash. And, and as we do that, guys, I can already tell you, we're going to run into copyright. We're going to run into individuals. Let, let, let me give you a hint of something. You guys have found sites out there where people have they have, they're trying to act like they are COT, right? YouTube found sites, and YouTube contacted us because they found sites, sites that were acting impersonating COT. That's what they said, impersonating, right? Now, we're not talking about people like Daily Excellence and places who play the videos, right, who do the voiceovers and videos, Daily excellence is a standard for that. A standard which means they're doing it, they're honest and upright, right? They're doing it the very honest and upright way. And that is the model for doing it, the right way, right? And God bless them for that. But you have other people who are out there, all they want to do is generate money off COT. So they take the conversations and everything else. COT does not have any social media website. We're not on any social media websites. We're not on any video websites like YouTube or anything else. Right? We're not. Um, so what that means is you have a lot of people who are directed to these other places. Right? And so they're building up, but we don't. Our word gets out, yes. Do you guys see the issue? The word, or what we're talking about, gets out. But we don't build up. Right? So the COT is famous out there. Mike from around the world is famous out there. 
but hardly anybody knows how to get to COT. Isn't that funny? Especially since I did something. Anyway, that's the way that works, because you have a lot of people who have redirected traffic to their own places, and they act like they are us. That's what they do. That's what they do. Anyway, so I'm very grateful. That, hey, listen, we're grateful for folks out there who are upright and honest. Very grateful. Very grateful. Very grateful. And just very grateful. But the Lord is going to work everything else out. I'm just not greedy for money, right? So I don't make anything about money. I really don't. I wouldn't advise, I would not advise anybody else operate from that model for me because you live in a world where money is necessary. I'm telling you right now, I'm so against that. But I just don't want to talk about that, right? Um, so you have bad people out there. And uh, somebody mentioned all that. Poor Angela. There, there are people out there who are just cruel. They are. They're cruel. And, of course, Angela has a prison ministry, reaches a lot of people. And there are folks out there who do things with that, too. They do. They do. One site with COT, they, they make an average of over a million dollars a year. Can you imagine that? That would be an incredible thing for us. We've never seen that. In fact, you don't want to know. I don't want to really go on YouTube, and I'll tell you why, guys. If I go on YouTube and we have videos, sure, it may draw a lot of revenue, right? You may do that. Um, we will have a couple of videos on YouTube, but not not daily. It's not Nothing's going to post there daily like that. So when we start that YouTube and, and actually get a video or two on there, it's going to be different. But people will just drudge up another thing, right? That's all they do. And then, see, because we stayed on social media, I can say we're not on YouTube. We're not on social media. We're not on anything. I can say that. As soon as I say, hey, we're on so-and-so, it's going to validate some of the crooks that are out there on those sites. And they'll say, see, it is us. And it will build them up even more. Now I have to come out with some sort of narrative saying, no, it's not us. Nope, this is not us. Right now I can say, nope, we're not out there. And we authorize daily excellence to do what they do. And there are people out there that use voiceovers, and they are upright and honest. But there are some very dishonest ones who emulate our entire site, my personality, right? Somebody was talking to me about some bylaws. Again, we don't have any of that. So Satan will often do that. He'll take anything that could be effective for the moment and try and pervert it. It's up to us to say, trusting in the Lord and consistent. It will try everything about you. Right? And sure, it's taken away a lot from COT, I guess you could say. Right? But that's the way it is. It's the way it is. It's just the way it is. Somebody says, the Lord vindicates you, Mike. Well, you know what it is? I don't, I do not care. I really don't care about too much except that people actually go back into their words and they they form a good relationship with Christ. That concerns me every day of my life. That's what I want to help other people with. Just to reintroduce them to Christ again. Right? We live in a very perverted world that promotes everything else but Christ. They do. The only way a person can truly be saved is with Christ. That's it. That's it. So we face challenges, yes. But those who endeavor to do anything the humble way, they're going to face those challenges. Those who do something for Christ, they're going to face those challenges. Somebody says, what will the building be used for? You guys. You guys. It's going to be used for the Lord's work in that building. That's exactly what that's for. And by the way, that takes a council to implement. Just because the building is there and things are getting finished up on that building, right? So so people can, actually, some could walk in there right now. But just because that's established does not mean everybody can come down there right now. You can't do that. We have to have a, we have to consult the Lord. 
that will be in prayer. We're going to have a council to do that. And every single step of what we're doing is going to be brought before the Lord with multiple people. And then from there, we'll act based on what the Lord gives us in that return. It'll take much counsel. It will. You guys know the dangers involved. You already know dangers are involved. People do weird things. Nefarious things. They do. So we're every step of the way. Right? It'll be a spiritual step. Because can you imagine being in there? If, if, if everybody is in there and somebody walks in there, because we fail to cover all areas with the truth of our Lord, with the anointing of the Lord, with prayer, and some things slip in there and start wreaking havoc, that would be awful, right? We live in those times where there are internal terrorists that will maximize damage in any way they can. We have a, there's, there's a spirit running amok in the USA that will use anything meant for good to pervert it. We live in a time where they're going to start blaming these shootings on churches. Oh, that's already begun. And the churches are being sued for things. That's already begun. For inciting violence and ideas into these people who commit these mass shootings. And that's going to get worse and worse and worse. So we have to be wise as serpents, as harmless as doves. We cannot go blindly into things, right? We can't do that. Somebody said, I saw one of the YouTube under COT. I thought, oh, it was bogus. Something looks to them off. Yeah, it is. We, we don't, uh, yeah. I do audio. Just so you guys know, I do audio. And other people do, uh, they do everything else, right? They do everything else. But I'll say again, the standard would be daily excellence. That's the standard, right? Because they actually requested that. They asked that. They did. I thought that was just incredible. Who am I to ask something like that? But they did. But other people out there are acting like they are COT and they're receiving money on behalf of COT. That's what they're doing. Uh, because they're acting like, and many people have come here to this site. They said, hey, one person said I donated. They donated 50000 to our site in less than six months. I had to write the person and say, no, you didn't give to us. And they were convinced, you know, they did, and they looked at their records. They said, oh, it went to the other thing, right? But stuff like that happens all the time. You have weird, bad people. One person gave, well, I told you guys one story. They gave a substantial amount and then asked for it back a day later. They did that on purpose. They did, right? But that's how people do. They try to trip you up and mess you up. Now, if we had a lot of fundage, uh, that wouldn't be a big deal, right? But here's how Satan works. Satan knows what you need. He knows what you need. And so he'll often do his little tricks. So you have to know about those little tricks. Right? You have to know about that. Yeah, that's how you do that. Anyhow. There we are. Anybody else? Any more questions? I'm, it's good that you guys ask those questions. It's good. I don't mind. I don't mind questions like that. I really don't. That's good that other people know that. Don't worry about the evil out there, folks. It's going to be out there. Just keep going forward. Now, I want to, I want to make a distinction. COT and other places are very different. Very different. Don't expect any other ministry out there to do what we're doing. They're not going to do that, okay? Understand that. Understand that. They will not, they're, not, they're not going to do that. Please understand that. Okay? Understand that. And as far as any other sites that use voiceovers, I don't really look at other folks' videos like that. I don't do that. Uh, but God bless them. So long as they're not doing crooked things, I, I don't care who. God said, as he has given it freely to us, we are to give freely to others, right? So I don't mind that part. I just mind it when people are tricked into believing that COT is somewhere else and believes in, you know, this rotten thing and has made this declaration written down, this, that, and the other. That's what I have a problem with. I don't like that. 
I don't like that. We work with quite a few people. We do. And these other folks, they just want money. That's what they want. And they'll do anything to get that money. Anything. So, that's not good. People are seeing two sons now, are they? I wouldn't call it two sons. They may be seeing something that looks like two sons from time to time, and it's not consistent, right? It's not. Listen, folks, we'll cover this later, but I'll tell you something. You've been told how things look in places you're not able to see. You're about to see how things really are, and it's not going to match what you've been told, okay? Remember that. You're going to see the truth, and that's going to scare a lot of people. So try not to become an instant expert on what does not exist. Try not to do that. Just remember, thing everything that has been secret is going to be uncovered. Remember that. Somebody says, Michael will never ask you to buy him a cup of coffee. Coffee makes him sleepy. Yes, it does. And no, I will not. I drink a cup of coffee right before I go to sleep. I do. Angela told me about that person who does that. No, I'd never ask anybody to buy me anything, actually. Actually. I'm the guy in the bushes. I am. I'm the guy in the bushes. I am an enigma for the most part. Somebody said Folgers. Okay. No, I don't drink Folgers. Folgers taste like pencil lead. I don't drink that stuff. They Folgers changed their formula in 2006, and I never touched it after that. I even wrote a letter to the company and told them they changed the formula, and they thought I was on the inside. Are you kidding? Anybody could taste that they changed something. Somebody said, what is COT International? In 1999, 1998-99, COT really went to work in the Middle East. So what I'm doing right here is only one thing that COT actually does, right? COT, when in, in the heyday, right, we used to take care, COT took care of about 330 families every month. And it was growing. It was growing. And then, of course, the mandate for my career changed after a time, and I I wasn't doing that. Well, when you have a big pay cut, right, then my wallet went, because I was doing that out of my pay. I don't save money. I don't. That's not wise for you guys, but I don't save money. I don't do that, and I won't do that. And there's a reason why I won't do that, but don't you guys do it. But I tend to use everything I have to take care of folks, do what I can for other folks, right? Uh, back in that time, COT took care of a lot of households, a lot of households. They teach him how to take care of those households, to be independent. And that was starting to spread. And we did a lot of coordinated work with uh, other people. That's what COT was, Council of Time. And it was a group of soldiers that got together to do some very rough work in some very rough areas that were totally overlooked. We agreed to do that overseas and in the United States. And then we went out from there. And then one day, one day, I met Angela. And when I met Angela, she was doing uh, Bible studies. And I was, before I met her, we were designing things. It's so funny because we were in, we were in tune, doing, going in the same direction with what we were doing. We wanted, we both wanted a place that was based off love, right? Kindness, not not the chat rooms where people curse and then praise the Lord and curse again, not that stuff, but something authentic. And so we began to go in that direction, right? Believe me, ever since that time, it's been some assaults. It's, it's been rough. It has. It's been rough. But uh, she's a precious person. She's gone through a lot. Quite a bit. She's gone through quite a bit. Quite a bit. So, I'll tell you, but folks, ask her sometimes. Just ask her. Ask her. 
ask her sometimes. Never assume, just ask. ask. Somebody said, that an idea, all can donate like the price of coffee to CUT. What a difference. <laughs> all can, wait a minute. All can donate like the price of coffee to COT. What a difference we can all make with so little. You know what? And, uh, and, and sometimes I'd say about, I'd say about on average in our accounts, probably a little over two, three million have, can make it to the site. They do listen to us. Some of them, but at sporadic times, right? And that would be something that everybody gave $1. Here's the problem though. I don't talk about money. I don't talk about money. I don't want it prompted. I want it to be real. Anybody understand that? I want it to be real, not prompted. Not some prep rally. I want it to be real, authentic, from the spirit, from spirit to spirit, heart to heart. Not anything prompted. Nothing about the Lord's work should ever be prompted. Nothing. It should be authentic and real. Not prompted. Not orchestrated. It really should be, but it's not. A lot of times people will not act on those. I know one thing. When people start acting on their convictions, the spirit has actually moved. Sometimes when I'm talking, uh, if you guys like it, right, you'll see a, You'll see a lot of $5 donations in there, so it worked, right? And when people don't like it, you'll see zip, I mean dry, no nothing for about a week or something like that, right? That's when nobody likes it. Now, it gets like that from time to time because the one thing I will not do is conform what I'm talking about to, to any numerical numbers. I'm not doing that. I need to obey the Lord. I don't, that, so I will not. That won't happen. If the Lord gave me something to say, Right? And somebody said, well, if you say that, I'll never give there again. Well, guess what? They won't be giving here again. I have to be ready to tell you guys what the Lord has given to me without any external influence. And if you've been here for a long time, you've noticed nothing influences what comes out of my mouth. I do have foot and mouth disease. But nothing influences what comes out of my mouth except for those things the Lord gives me. Guys, don't make this about a donation thing. Don't don't do that. Don't do that. Right? That should be all. That should be something that should be real. Right? That's why. Like, uh, take Pastor Paul for example. There is no way he should have to ask for a dime. There's no way these ministers out there should have to ask for anything. There's no way they should have to. There's no way. But I'll tell you something. If you ate at a restaurant and you loved the food, and one day you came and it was closed, would you be upset? Take care of the place you feed from. It's that simple. Didn't ask me about competition or anything else. Just take care of the place you feed from. Take care of it. Because when you take care of the place you feed from, the food gets better and better. That part is true. That part is true. That's why I don't mind certain questions about statuses. I'm not like most people. I'll tell you straight to your face. I'm the guy from the bushes. And uh, you know what the sad part is, is that I am still attempted to, so certain, certain organizations attempt to use me from time to time. Sometimes under obligation. Sometimes because it's partly I'm still stuck in the file somewhere. But make no mistake. These governments do not like Christians. They don't. They do not like Christians at all. They don't. And that's just the way that is. That's the world we live in. Listen, folks, I don't want to tie you up. I'm going to say God bless everybody. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow.